They want to find the range. Is the range pretty easy to find from here? Mm -hmm. Would the range be easy to find from my calculator? Yes. Because you have the five number summary that's, that's attached to that analysis in there. So here's a place where there might be a chance for you to get some partial credit if you didn't subtract very well. But here I should be taking that nine minus one to get a range of eight. Up here, I'm gonna put this information into the calculator. That's the only way I can get around that. That's gonna give me a pretty large set of data out there. So we go back to typing it into the calculator. And again, it doesn't make a difference. I showed you some shortcuts just for being able to show you the shortcuts. But that doesn't mean you have to do shortcuts. There's nothing wrong. You still gotta type it into the calculator. It's not that big of a deal. Okay. 255, 52, 498, 135. And as I catch those mistakes, it's actually easier to fix them there. As you catch those mistakes for me, it's actually easy. But I'm not gonna be there to catch your mistakes on a test, so you gotta be careful yourself. You're not gonna have as many problems in this set that give you huge data values, but sometimes the data values are not gonna be pretty numbers. They may be large numbers in themselves or they may be decimal numbers you have to be careful with. So whatever you do, spend the time double checking. So I can scroll up this list that you haven't called my attention to any other obvious mistakes that I made in there. Now those values are not arranged sequentially. One of the advantages of using the calculator is now when I come back and I hit stat, and I go into the one variable statistics, and I tell it that I want to use list number one, which is where I put those values. I have the information for the range immediately, because I can go down here to this bottom screen. This would be a place where maybe it would be a good idea for us to be able to show a step on our scratch paper, demonstrating that we knew what we were supposed to do. So here my maximum value was 498, and my minimum value was 15, giving me a range of 483. Now those 483 units that are out there are equally divided up among those 18 people that we're dealing with. But that's what I don't want it to do by hand is to do all that work. Now can you, can you imagine even more with the larger numbers? Now imagine doing all the subtraction problems we would have from those columns and the squaring of all those things. It still falls under the category of cruel and unusual, unusual punishment. But finding the standard deviation, that's pretty easy because I just pulled it off the calculator. Let's say we only wanted one, stand, one decimal place there. Then the standard deviation would turn out to be? 1st of all, do your numbers agree with my numbers? If they don't, then one of us had something wrong. And I won't say it's not me, because you know it can be me. Standard deviation, which value did you pick up? S of X. So we have a 114.4 if we're going to keep one decimal place. Percentages are a subset operation. Harkens back to chapter two or unit two. To find the percentage of people who have wait times in the ESR in the, in the ER of less than 136 minutes, we have to go back to the data and play hide and go see. Calculator can still be beneficial here. How many data values were less than 136? Well, you could count them. No, yes, no, yes, 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 no, no, yes, 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 yes. So I have 13 of the 18 people were less than 136. This is not the five number summary. You aren't going to get when you get a straightforward percentage problem, always a value that will be 25%, 50%, 75%, or 100%, or 0%. 
So you may have to go back and use some of the concepts from the previous unit to find the subset that meets your needs and compare it to the total quantity. So now I'm looking at 13 out of 18 in the list. And they're gonna ask you for a decimal there. And that decimal will ask you for a percentage value. And they will probably give you the problem set up like this, where there's a percent symbol on the outside. We never force you to type those extra symbols other than a decimal place. Of the 18 people that were there, 13 had this particular characteristic, which if we then multiply by 100 to be able to put it back into a percent, we have 72.2%. That wasn't a 75%, that wasn't a 50%, it wasn't a 25%. So you are gonna still see some problems with percentages. There are at least two or three problems where they will ask you to do some comparative operations. And that just means more typing for you. 